Okay, back to the PowerPoints. We just wound up talking about the Excel spreadsheet template to do a Gantt chart. People did Gantt charts by hand. So you don't need this. You can draw a good hand drawing. We're going through how to make good drawings, like this drawing you could draw by hand. By the way, this is a good, um, a good little drawing to show you the different lines and how they're used. Cutting plane line, a phantom line, um, let's see, center line, path of motion, center line, uh, hidden lines, uh, visible lines, the strong visible ones, extension lines, viewing plane line, which is uh, almost the same, well, yeah, cut as the cutting plane line, as you can tell. Uh, okay, anyway, section lines and so forth. So as you're learning your engineering graphics, now you know what the line should look like about their uh, their approximate weight. Okay, so good drawings of your project dimensioned. Dimensioned. There's only one dimension on this one because they're showing lines and symbols. Okay. Um, I already said everything takes longer. If you're high, highly skilled, double the estimates. And that was about right for my electrician friend. If you've done something before, but you're not skilled at it, add about triple. And if you've never done something, go ahead and quadruple it. Evaluate, evaluation. So inspection, analysis, tests, alpha testing, and beta testing. Plan, do, check, and act on the plan, verify. Don't forget prototypes. You have a part of your project that needs to work right. Prototype it, try it out, revise, refine, you know, improve it until you get it right. Okay. You have a goal, a plan, you take action, and you're there. So, your anticipated path. Your Gantt chart communicates the plan, the timeline especially. You remove su uh, surprises, ensure success. Even the best laid plans get delayed. But at least you have a sequence. You have a roadmap. Even if the timeline is is different than what you thought. The 787 it was three years behind schedule. Excuse me, just two years. Another project, I don't remember the name of it, at Boeing, was three years behind. But anyway. Um so implementation, best combination of trade-offs between the design, the needs, and uh, thorough understanding issues. So at this stage, things can still go wrong. What you thought would work right didn't. That's why you prototype. In a shortened timeline, you test your ideas. If you're, if you're uncertain they'll work, you test them and then make sure they'll work. So implementation. Um, the project manager blamed the planner. She said the whole thing was becoming impossible and left town. Um, you know, the Escher diagram. Um, Implementation, best way to fill the need that you identified in your problem formulation phase. Uh, you make something real, you concrete. You optimize performance, measures of goodness and figures of merit, miles per gallon. You can talk about a car's capacity and you can talk about a car's um, range, how far it can go on a tank of gas. And that's useful information by itself. But a lot of times people want this measure of goodness. What is its miles per gallon? Okay. And then project management. That's where the Gantt chart comes in. 
Um, implementation, efficient use of resources. You're meeting the specs. You're, you've defined the functional requirements and the design requirements at the beginning. Now you've got to meet them. And results are reproducible. You can do it again if you had to. Report the results. If the requirement's not met, is it in flaw, uh, an inherent flaw, an implementation problem? manufacturing, unexpected use, artificial restrictive requirements like um, a soda cup at a restaurant, a soda machine. If it's designed to fill up a cup in 10 seconds, what if it's 10.1? Do you really care? Is it artificially restrictive? If it takes 10.1, it takes 10.1, it's still a very useful product. No fudging. Okay, <laughs> so here's kind of a cute cartoon, you know, evaluation tool, and the other guy saying, well, maybe it's a problem with the nut, um, that you're not using the right tool for the right job. Okay, evaluation phase, testing, how does it conform, does it satisfy the need, and so forth. Document discovery, success, flaws, learn from the experience. Every design can be improved. Whenever you build something, I'm sure at the end you say, you know, I could have done this different and it would have been better. Or I could have done this different and it would have been better. So um, file that away in your notebook for future reference for the next phase, next go around or next similar project you work on. Evaluation. So what are you going to do to measure it at the end? That's what we mean by planning the evaluation phase. And then evaluate its performance. Measure this its performance, whatever your product is. Does it fill the need? Are there improvements? Do you need to iterate the design? Ask the customer what they think. We make positive uh, impacts. We adapt. It's a process. Adaptive action. What happens? So what? Why? Why do we need to react to it? And then now what? What are we going to do next? Systematic. You're not doing things trial by error. You're trying to zero in. You're sorting through. You've got a haystack and you're trying to find a needle. And uh, you're taking a very systematic approach to divide the haystack in half and send out teams to look at each half and then divide the haystack in half again, you know, and send another team out and so forth. So you finally find that little needle. Three phases. I need to change this slide right there. Excuse me. Three phases, 10 activities. Now, different, if you go to a different engineering school or maybe you've had engineering in high school or whatever, They'll have uh, a different description. Well, it won't be 10. It'll be 6 or it'll be 12 or something like that. And they won't say it in the same words in exactly the same way. But an engineering design process is an engineering design process. They're all about the same. They're all roughly equivalent. They all mean you have to go back and forth. They all might have things done in different orders you know every every author is going to say oh do it this way and another author says oh no no do it this way and you look at them all and you say oh they're they're, they're nearly the same you just you're just making the distinction so you can sell more books this is the one we use okay planning implementing and evaluating a good test plan um brainstorming if something goes wrong that's the end of this video we and this chapter we will pick it up with the chapter on creativity next